today. Uh, assistant coach Chris Carroll. Chris, appreciate you taking the time this morning. Um, as always with our Zooms, uh, we ask that uh, if you have a question, please use the hand raise feature and I'll call on you and please keep your line muted until I call on you to ask your question. So again, Chris, thanks for the time. And uh, we'll get started with uh, Steve Wiseman. Steve, go ahead. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you this morning. How are you doing? Oh, what's up, Steve? What's going on? Hey, uh, I got a quick, I'm going to ask a two-parter here. Coach mentioned right. last night that that Matt Hurt and Henry Coleman both have injury situations that he said Matt would, would play if there were a game this week. It was more of a precaution thing. I wondered if the same is true for Henry. And then also with those two out of practice or scrimmages, what has that done to the rotation? Who has been able to step up with those extra minutes and show you guys something? Yeah, you know, Matt, Matt is actually doing well. He worked out uh, yesterday um, for about 45 minutes prior to practice. And he look, he looks good. And, um, you know, he was, he was able to practice that yesterday, actually, um, till he had to leave and to go take a final. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but he's doing, he's doing better. Um, and then Henry, you know, twists his ankle a little bit and, um, you know, he's a tough guy, but you know, right now you just, you just want to make sure that they're a hundred percent. And so, uh, if we needed him to play both of those guys, they could play if, if it was a game today, but, uh, just got to just make sure they're a hundred percent healthy. Um, you know, the guys, the guy that I've seen that stepped up the most, in my opinion, is, uh, Jalen, Jalen Johnson has, you know, he's starting to come around, you know, starting to come around. He kind of, you know, started off a little slow early in a, in a, in a preseason, so to speak. Uh, but now you're starting to see his talent kind of evolve a little bit, um, just making plays, extremely versatile, um, really good athlete. I mean, transition, him getting downhill has been great for us. And he's a he's a great passer. Now, he, he, he turns it over a little bit, but <laughs> – but he can make some plays uh, with the pass that, you know, that's, you know, I didn't know coming in, you know, you see him, you don't think about him being a playmaker, but uh, I think that's his best skill set is, is passing the ball right now. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Evan Cullen next with the Chronicle. Go ahead, Evan. So yeah, um, bouncing off that related to Jalen Johnson, he was uh, obviously a top five recruit when he committed uh, fell a little bit last year after he, um, you know, didn't play much and had to transfer. Uh, do you feel that, um, you know, compared to the team's previous top recruits, he's a bit underrated uh, heading into this season? Yeah, I think so, Evan. I think, uh, I think he is underrated. You know, not playing though most of the year last year, you could tell. You could tell. You know, he he was when you don't play um, or you play partially. It hurts you, and then with everything going on with the pandemic, I think it set them back. And so now you come in, and you know it's go time. And so I think he had to get ready. And I think uh, he's been putting in extra work every day. Uh, he's running extra out the practice. He's getting extra shots in. His conditioning has improved. And so I think he's starting to hit his stride. Now he still have a, he still has a learning curve. Um, you know, just learning the college game, but. Man, with that talent and um, if he can continue to grow, he's going he's gonna to continue to take off. Uh, but I, I would say he's underrated. All right, we'll go to Brennan Marks next with The Athletic. Go ahead, Brennan. Hey, Chris, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate you. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Wendell. We've heard so much from a couple of other people about, you know, the, the leaps and bounds that he's made in his game. What do you think has made the biggest difference in that? And, and how do you see his change in his game being reflected in the change of maybe his personality and, and sort of coming into himself as a person? Yeah, he, Brendan, he's been, uh, he's been tremendous this, this preseason. You know, the growth from, a, from your freshman year to your sophomore year. So we look at Matt Hurt and, and Wendell Moore in the one and done era, you know, a lot of people like really think you would think they had bad years, so to speak, right? But I mean, for freshmen to play those type of minutes and for those averages, if you look at their average, this, in my day, I mean, coming back for their sophomore year, they would have been on covers of magazines and they would have been like, I mean, really? And so it's just different now. But the, 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 mo the main thing, the most important thing that I've seen out of Wendell has been his confidence. 
it would be times in games last year when he was open and he wouldn't shoot the ball. And you can hear the bench and then some fans yelling, shoot, shoot. And he would pass up open shots. I think just, you know, a year older, um, you know, working on his game all summer. And then you come back, you're older, you're more confident. And he's playing with extreme confidence now. And so for us, that's going to help us because he can shoot the ball, but you wouldn't know it because he <laughs> wouldn't shoot. <laughs> and so now he's when he's open, we encourage him to take a shot because it's a good shot. Even if he misses it, he, sh he shoots such a good ball that it's easy to rebound it. And so, um, you know, his confidence has been the main thing from – freshman year to sophomore year. Thank you so much. Go to Brian Horace next. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, thanks for doing this, Coach. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, with several high-profile coaches, um, Bayheim and Izzo in particular, testing positive for COVID, are you guys worried about possible postponements and, and having to reschedule games? Yeah, and, you know, you, you hope that those two legendary coaches are doing well. You know, you're always in the back of your mind thinking about, you know, the situation that we're in with the pandemic. Uh, it's been a worldwide thing. Um, seems like every day in our country, the numbers are increasing at a rapid pace. Um, so it's always in the back of your mind. But, you know, what we try to tell our guys and what we try to control is just, you know, just stay in the moment. You know, just stay in the moment. You approach every day uh, and practice the same and just, uh, and just try to work. And then whatever happens, it happens. You can't control it, really because you just don't know. You know, you could be doing everything right and you can still, um, you know, somehow contract COVID, you know? And so um, it's been it's been a tough year, um, but, you know, we see the light, you know, November 25th, which is a special day because it's my birthday, uh, ladies and gentlemen on the call. So, uh, but, so I'm looking forward to that. If we could just get to that day uh, for our guys, man, for college basketball, uh, it'd be huge because uh, I miss it. I know our players miss it, and I know it's going to be some it's it's going to be some cancellations, and so it's a lot that we're going to have to work through. But if we can do it together, and the most important thing is that everybody is healthy and safe. That's the most important thing. So if it, it takes a game getting canceled, you don't want that, but you do want everybody safe. Thank you, Coach. All right, we'll go to Jason Evans next. Go ahead, Jason. So, Chris, uh, I. I'm sure you heard that the NCAA has decided to play the entire NCAA tournament in one location. Um, and, and we have teams that are not practicing at all right now. You were just talking a moment ago uh, about the COVID you know, craziness that we're all living through. Do you think we're gonna get through the entire season? Have you guys talked about what you might do if you have to shut down for a long period of time or something like that? It, it just seems like it, it's just really tough. Yeah, it's really tough, Jason. You know, we, we, we try not to focus on it. Um, you know, they're talking about Indiana. If we can just get there, right? If, if that's the, the hope and the wish and the praying is just, you know, that's like, man, at the end of the rainbow, you know, just like it's something that you, we think about, but we just take it day by day, you know, one day at a time. Um, that's all you can really focus on, knowing that the main thing, if we can get to that tournament, you know, and so we can't, it could, it's going to be cancellations. Uh, some teams are going to have to shut down, right? And that's tough, but, you know, it, it's, it's been tough. And so what we've been doing, and uh, I think that's what's been going on, like we, we've been fighting, we've been fighting. And so if we can just keep fighting, uh, keep praying, and hopefully uh, this thing will start to, you know, turn for the for the good. And if, if that happens, um, I mean, it's just it'd, it'd just be great. More importantly for the kids, Jason, because I think about, you know, I got to play in a tournament all four years, right? I mean, that's that's the best. To play in a tournament, that's what you come to college basketball, come to college for, to play college basketball, is to play in a tournament. And for these kids not to have the opportunity, you know, you think about those seniors, right? Their last year, they don't get a chance to play in the tournament 2020, you know, and those, you know, we were literally in tears, you know, it was, it was tough. And so uh, if we can, if we can have that tournament, but we, if we can also have a, a season where 
you know, we start to turn with the, with the pandemic, I think that's the best for the kids. Just got to keep fighting. So, so I've got a quick follow on that. Um, we're, we're, we're a week from our first game. Can you compare what the preparation is like for this team to past teams where there weren't as many challenges as we've faced so far? Where, where are they compared to the previous Duke teams that you coached and played on? Yeah, you know, it's tough because we have seven freshmen, Jason. And, you know, with, with so, so you take our team last year, um, we're, we're old, so to speak, right? And old in, co old in college now is different. Um, we had seniors, you know, we had three seniors, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I'm not missing anybody, but we had Jack White, Javin, and J-Rob, right? And Trey Jones was a, was a veteran, although he was a sophomore, he was a veteran because uh, he played so much his freshman year. And so with this team, man, we're, we're, we're young. I mean, young, seven freshmen. So you, you teach more, you know, you have to slow it down as coaches. I think we've done a, a really good job, all of us of just, just not rushing the process, so to speak. You know, you have to take your time when you're explaining because, and you might have to do it over and over again and, and, and be patient with these guys because, you know, with an older team, they just pick it up right away. They, they know, and they can do, they already know. So it's like, okay, yeah, do that. <laughs> and so with this team, you have to just, you know, just take your time a little bit more. Um, but we've had a great group, Jason. We've had a great group. These guys come every day with great attitudes. They come to work. It's been a fun group to work with. And, Though we, although we are in a pandemic, I think it's allowed us to grow cro closer, so to speak, because, you know, you don't, you know, as a freshman, you would like to get out and hang out a little bit and party a little bit, but they're not allowed to do that. So the party's been in the gym. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. All right, we'll go next to Jim Sumner. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, hi, Chris. Um, you mentioned seven freshmen. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a walkman in there. But you got six freshmen and a transfer. Duke has never had a grad student transfer before. So, so Patrick is kind of uncharted waters for Duke. He's a 23-year-old Ivy League graduate. He's also somebody who's new to the program, new to the system, new to playing with and against power five, power six players. How is he how is the program working with him differently? How is he reacting? How is he coming along? And Patrick's been great. I mean, this guy <clears throat> has a smile on his face every time you see him. But it's a different level. It's a different level. And he and, and he he had to get adjusted. And so when you when you come in and you know the competition is just different. It's just different. And so he's had to practice against really good players every day. And from a result, he's been our Probably our last couple of weeks, he's been our most consistent uh, big guy. Yeah, every day, you know what you're going to get out of Patrick. He's uh, his, his intensity on the defensive end. He's he's our best big in terms of ball screen coverage on the defensive end, and this guy can rebound with the best of them. And so his hustle and his effort uh, has has been uh, elite for, at this moment. And he's an underrated passer. And that, I, I get, I, I won't say, I don't know if he had that, but I think that's coming from playing in the Ivy League, right? He, that, that's the Ivy League thing right there. But he has a good feel with the ball. Um, and he's just easy to play with, Jim. He's just really easy to play with. Great attitude. But he, he did have to go through an adjustment period. Like all these guys, these, these guys, when you come into college and you're used to doing it one way, the six freshmen and – Really, you really do have seven freshmen because Pat's new to everything. And so you have to learn a new system. You have to work harder than you ever work. You have to get used to the coach, you know, Coach K yelling at you for the first time. <laughs> you know, it's all new. And so, you know, these guys and Patrick, you know, being an older guy, they've really responded uh, well. All right, Matt Burr, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I just wondered if you could comment on the tournament uh, co-hosted with Howard in honor of Dr. Aquari. I grew up in Durham and knew his son, um, Chidi, and I figured maybe you knew him as well. Uh, 
and just how that kind of came together. I know you had to cancel other games and this sounds like a good alternative. So, Yeah, it, it was something that, uh, you know, Dr. O has been, he's been close to the, to, he, I know when I was in school, I, I saw him all the time and Coach K called him like his, his fourth assistant coach, so to speak. Uh, great family. He was a great man. And, you know, for Coach K to, to come up with the idea, um, since we were, we're not going to go to, you know, to South Dakota, um, it was just something that just seemed right. And it just felt right. It felt good um, to honor such a special man. And so it's something that we take great pride in. We're going to honor his name, honor his family. And um, it, it's special that we were able to do that because he was such a big part of Duke basketball. So you think about, you know, Coach K and all the assistant coaches that have come in. It's also been a, a lot of great people, Matt, around the program. Dr. O being one of them. Uh, we'll go to Evan Colon. Go ahead, Evan. So in a typical season, the captains are announced a few months out. Obviously, this year's a little bit de different, but we're approaching, you know, less than two weeks of the season. Um, so I think uh, late last week, Nate James referred to Wendell Moore as one of the captains. But I was just wondering if anyone else has uh, fulfilled, uh, has stepped up to fulfill that role or uh, when that might formally be announced. Yeah, Evan, I don't know. We're still in the process. Wendell has been captain-like although he hasn't been named captain. <laughs> uh, you hear his voice all the time. I'm gonna tell you a guy's voice that you hear a lot and he's a freshman is, is Henry Coleman. I mean, this guy's talking all the time. You know, he, he's, he's a somewhat of a leader uh, right now. And so um, Goldwire and Matt Hurt, those guys, the upperclassmen, those guys have been really good. Joey Baker in terms of leading by example. But you hear Wendell and Henry Coleman's voice the most. Um, and so that's been good. Because I think you have to have both, both when it comes to leadership. You have to have guys who are vocal, but you also have to have guys who are, who are not quite as vocal. But every day, you know what you're going to get. They're going to work hard. They're going to set it, you know, they're going to set the example of, of how practice should go, um, how hard you should work in both on, on both on the court and in the weight room. And that's why this team has been so good because we've had guys step up and these guys bring it every day. And so it's, it's, it's been good from that standpoint. We have time for about two more questions. So we'll go to Vashti Hurt and then Brennan Marks. So Vashti, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Thanks for your time. Um, you guys have had a couple of inner squad scrimmages these past, I guess, couple of Fridays. And uh, I just wanted to know what you saw from those. How would you scout the team based on what you've seen? Well, V, I think, I think our team, first scrimmage was, was just okay, so to, so to speak. It was, you know, we were first time in Cameron. And so I thought guys were kind of nervous, even though the Cameron crazies were not in there. But then our second scrimmage, Man, you saw a team that, you know, if we're running, we're re really athletic. We can play with such a fast pace. We can pressure the ball. We have two guys in Goldwire and Roach who, when they're guarding the ball, it's tough from the point guard position. Uh, and then you have our wings. You have Wendell and DJ who, if you're catching the ball on a wing and those guys are pressuring, they make it really tough. They make it really tough. Uh, on the defensive end. And we're still learning how to play with one another. So I would think that would be the one thing that we got to continue to develop is playing with each other. Uh, when, a dry, when a guy drives, you know, playing off penetration, uh, making the extra pass um, and not, trying not to over dribble too much. I think if it was one thing that we're going to continue to work on as, as a staff and our players need to work on, it's just moving the ball because we have a lot of talent. And so, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you've done it, you know, you try to do it alone, so to speak, but moving a ball, playing together, if we can develop that with the team that we have, I think we're going to take off, but it, it will take some time because they're learning each other. So you can't, you can't be mad at them because they're learning. And so that's why the scrimmages in Cameron, the first one was, was okay. The next one was better. And so the more and more these guys get to play with one another, 
the better they'll be. All right, last question. We'll go to Brendan Marks. Go ahead, Brendan. Hey, Chris, I just wanted to follow up on, on what you were just talking about with uh, Wendell and Henry being such good talkers, specifically Wendell. Was that something that you would have seen from him last year, him being so vocal? Or is that just something else that's come along with him, uh, you know, sort of developing his confidence a little bit more? Yeah, just developing his confidence a little bit more. As a freshman, as a freshman, you're more so inclined to just, you know, lay back and just follow. That happens. I did it myself. You know, I will follow – Wojo and Jeff Capel and just as a freshman, I just shut up, right? I didn't say anything. Just just run hard and shut up, you know? And and so, but when you get familiar um, and you start to learn, you know, what the program is about, what coach wants, uh, you kind of fall into that role. He, he's always had a good voice and now he's using that voice. And so for him, that's part of developing as well. Uh, not being quiet, not being as reserved, the confidence level with uh, with the playing, but also with the leading. And so he's been he's been good, uh, you know, since we've been back. Just been and and it, and it goes off the court as well. You know, he's been talking, you know, he talks a lot on the court, but off the court, these guys are all talking. It's not a quiet group. It's not a quiet group, man. You're here, Mark Williams, the tallest guy on the team. He's he's one of the jokesters on the team. You know, you, you got Wendell, you got Matt Hurt is even talking. I mean, the, from the time we recruited Matt Hurt in high school to the time to who Matt Hurt is now, I mean, it's night and day, man. So that's what, for me, uh, and ending them with this, like for me, that's the joy of college basketball. You get to, you get to see guys Everybody, you know, we talk about the we in the one and done area. And you know, but it's still college. And the joy of college is seeing these guys come in who, you know, they work on their weaknesses and they evolve as players and people. And so that's why I love college basketball. That's why I love coaching college basketball, because you get to see these young men develop. And it's and it's okay if they don't do it in a year. You know, it's okay. And so I actually like to see these guys stay multiple years because you see growth. And nobody's ready to go to the NBA anyway. You know, they might be like, so you see see Zion and RJ and Cam. Yeah, are they really ready? Well, athletically, but you're not ready for all the challenges of being a professional. And that's what I like about college. I understand those guys. You have to go. You have to go. The money is too good. You So you understand it. But it's nothing like... A, a player growing and you get to see that growth. And I think that's what, you know, we all, we all miss college basketball because we want to see it, right? We want to see Wendell Moore and Matt and see how they come back as sophomores. And we saw how Trey Jones came back as a sophomore. That That's what college basketball is all about uh, for me. Well, it's a really good one to end on. Coach Carwell, really appreciate